All right, welcome to the Augur meeting here on May 20th, coming to you live from London, Tampa, Finland, and Columbia, Missouri is where Enoch is, I assume. And yep. <laughs> uh, so here is our uh, our agenda item, just uh, an update on the Augur release. There's uh, a release that we're testing right now that should address um, some on a handful of repositories that are really, really large. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've done some things to accelerate the collection of message data and also to ensure the completeness of message data. We found on inspection that, uh, like for example, Kubernetes didn't have it and Rust didn't have, we didn't have all the messages for them. And so there are, I think I counted 22 at this point, repositories out of over a hundred thousand that are so large that we didn't get all the message data. So um, now we do, and that's being tested in a release. Um, that's, that's my update there. Uh, two agenda items. And it looks like Don, you've got a data science question. <clears throat> Should I bring this up this link here, this input data? Um, oh, yeah, you can, if you want. Um, so so within the data science working group, I'll just give you a little background and then tell you where, where I am with this. Um, within the data science working group, one of the things that we've been talking about is that we have a lot of people who are interested in doing more actual data science work, um, both to, you know, in some cases to improve their skills or just in some cases to learn more about, um, you know, open source projects and what, what we can, what we can learn from them. So we have a lot of people who are interested in, in doing actual research projects as part of the data science working group. So historically cool. we, um, we keep talking about this and then we don't get ourselves organized. And I carved out a bunch of time last week and organized a bunch of projects. So, um, which is, is not really what, what I wanted to talk about here, but the license change analysis is one of the projects. Um, so I can I can send you a link to the uh, the other the other projects. So we're going to talk about that in the data science uh, working group. Here, I'll just drop it in the chat so you can see the other projects we have. But as a part of doing a part of doing this, um, I one of the projects was around license changes. So it's, we have a couple of projects that are loosely around elephant factor and the fact that, you know, companies kind of do, do things to these projects that is really disruptive for other people. One of which is a license change. So mm -hmm. I started putting together uh, just a really basic, like this, this isn't a real data set. It's like an, in, the in, it would be the input to a data set that we would create to, uh, to analyze, but it's, it's sort of the, the little mini, mini data set with just the license change details. So you can see that there are 19 on the list right now. I've been working with the to-do group to make sure that we're not missing anything. Uh, so I'll continue to, um, to do that. But what I wanna do is I want to, we wanna be able to analyze these and look at the, the repositories, and in my case, I'm thinking maybe not just the individual repository where the license change happened, but maybe we want to do some more analysis of other things happening in that um, that organization. So the Elastic organization in general, MongoDB, the GitHub organization. So I put all of these GitHub orgs in this list in into um, Augur. So most of them, I think the big ones were already in there. Like Redis is already in there. Elastic is already in there. HashiCorp's already there. Um, but I added all of them just to, to make sure that we had all of the repositories. So I put all of this into Augur. But once we start analyzing this, we will need to, I don't know, to do some sort of analysis. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet, because uh, I think we need to just kind of talk about that as a project and see what people are interested in, in looking at. But we need an easy way to get the get the data. So we've already, you know, we've got a really nice Postgres database uh, structured from Augur. And so, but I also know that just writing database queries against the production instance of the SaaS server creates problems. Um, so I didn't want to just start writing some queries and start pulling this data out and, and storing it somewhere. What I was wondering is if you go back to the, um, go back to the minutes. Yep. Um, 
could we just like export the data from these orgs into a new database or is there a better way to get this out of Augur? What I'm wondering is, can we can we pull the orgs that we care about, put them somewhere else so that we can just write queries against a database that doesn't even have an Augur front end? What about, um, because I could, so, um, so I'm trying to think of a, of a flow here. And you don't even need to answer this right now. I wanted to mostly like bring it up to get you thinking about maybe ways that we could do this. No, I mean, this has definitely been on my mind and there's two, there's two like main thoughts that have been rattling around the first. They're, so they're, they're not mutually exclusive. Uh, the first one is uh, to create a significantly smaller version of the auger database that uh, queries can be designed against. And then mm -hmm. once someone's confident that they're getting the data that we want, uh, we take a look at the query, uh, decide if it requires a materialized view or something like that to assure performance in the big instance, and then produce uh, just an endpoint that gives you that data set for that data. So that's mm -hmm. so for any really for any data, right? So if we produce if we create it if we use a smaller data set, it lets people query faster, it lets them design faster, and then there's there's a lag, of course, with that idea which would be like, I don't know, say two weeks, say two to four weeks to get the data from the query that we're sure of uh, into an endpoint. And of course, mm -hmm. that endpoint would probably be more than that query. It would be, you know, all the things that might seem reasonable around it. So one specific query could lead to an, you know more than one endpoint. That's one thought that I've been having. The other thought that I've been having is when it comes to like, because I, I'm doing this myself, of course, and when it comes to analyzing a very large data set, especially one that's in production like this, it's uh, it's just expensive. And not knowing for sure if we're going to have compute in order to, uh, to provide like a read-only instance, the other thought that I had was like a moving data into more of a decision support kind of environment, like data marts or a data warehouse or some kind of structure or perhaps even, you know, some other structure that would be easier for people to query against uh, as well. And so those, you know, those are the two thoughts that I've, because I've been thinking about this obviously, because in the back of my mind, I know, I know this is something that has to be dealt with. <laughs> um, so uh, these are the two thoughts I've had. I don't know what you think of, of them. Um. So I I uh I really like the idea of a smaller auger instance that people can just use as a test bed, um, I, because and because I think that that and you know and then we can like you said the stuff that we're gonna we can you know put them in materialized views or something for stuff that's gonna have to happen on a more regular basis. I do, I do like that idea. I think that solves some of the problems that we that we have around the ad hoc queries. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that solves this particular problem, because um, I don't know that we'll necessarily need to keep running it. Right? Like, if we figure out what, let let's just let's just talk about this kind of from a flow perspective. Like if if we do some analysis on this, we're going to have, um, you know, like I'm a, you know, some machine learning pipelines or machine learning, um, or regression analysis, or you know, some sort of statistical analysis that we need to feed this into. But mm -hmm. we probably just need to get figure out what analysis we're going to do, what data points we need, and then we probably just need to extract it, probably once or a couple of times, um, if if we realize that there's some more stuff that we need. So I don't think that this one, like creating a materialized view is gonna probably help us because it's probably something that we just need to extract maybe once. Um, do you see what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's, of course, you know, I have a hard time ever believing that anything is really going to be once. Um, mm -hmm. So my point is, my, we would, we would continue suggests, to add to no. it, so a materialized yeah. view isn't gonna isn't going to help us. It's not that it's going to be once. It's going to be that we might run it and then realize we're missing a couple of variables. And so we're going to add those variables and then 
and then maybe we add some more variables. So it's not it's not something we're going to need to uh, reproduce exactly. Was my point? Not that we're not going to okay. run it more than it's that we're I not see, going to I run see. the exact same thing a whole bunch of times over and over and over. Like the way that I do with my starter project help metrics model. Like some of some of those queries really should probably be materialized views so that we're not. Um, yeah, because those are predictable. We're going to run the same query over and over and over on different different repositories. Whereas this, it, I, I feel like it's not something that we're just going to re reproduce exactly multiple times. So I'm make jumping. Yeah, it does. I'm jump maybe, and maybe I'm just jumping ahead three steps. My experience is that it's unusual when somebody gets like they just want it once and that's it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'm ready to believe you, but I no, I that's not, seen that's that not my point at all. That's not that's not oh. that's not sorry. That's not what I okay. that's not what I meant. That may have been what I okay. said. My point is I don't. That's what I meant. Yeah. Well, okay. My point is, it's not something you'd want to trans translate into a materialized view because you're not going to have to reproduce it a whole bunch of times exactly. Like you're going to pull some data out, and then you're going to realize, oh wait, you know, if I had this other variable, what what would it look like? And so then then you run the query again to pull some additional data. You see what I mean? So it's more it's an iterative yeah. process when you're doing research when you're doing these statistical models. It tends to be iterative as opposed to reproducible so oh, so i'm yeah. not gonna okay, I, okay yeah you see what i mean like you're yes, gonna realize you for... stuff and so you're gonna you're gonna run a slightly different query the next time because you missed you missed a field or two in the database that you really did need that you're gonna need to put as, as a variable in your model so it's fair to say this is for computational modeling kinds of work probably yeah Okay. I don't know exactly what that would look like because we haven't we haven't really defined it yet. Exactly what how we want to model this and what we want to look at. So I'm in, I'm inclined to think that for this sort of thing, the like the fastest way to keep the data scientists moving is to define uh, a set of like when we talk about the the first option that I have rolling around my head of a practice smaller instance, like smaller, smaller could not be small, like a hundred thousand repositories is very large. So like if we took, for example, just all of these and put them in the smaller instance, it would still be dwarfed by the public instance. So yeah. Um, and I don't know how I could, I could actually look since most of these are, or you said all of them are now in the public instance. I could just check the overall scope and scale of each yeah, of them. It's, but... pro it's probably still collecting, um, cause I added them this morning. Oh yeah. It's certainly still collecting. <laughs> but I don't know, um... like a lot of these were already in there before. Like I know Elastic was in there before. I know HashiCorp, um, Redis. Yep. Yep, and you added the whole org. For I each added of these. the whole org. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I mean, yeah. yeah so I, I bet a lot of I bet a lot of them are in there already. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure so that you're think, right. I think that's that's what would help us is having an instance that just has these orgs in it, um, and it doesn't even need to be a full instance. Like we don't need a front end at all. Right, because I can look at yeah. these in the Augur front end. You mean like you don't need a met, you don't need an eight knot instance, is what you're saying? Yeah, Augur doesn't come without a front end anymore. I mean, we can hide it, but it's there. Well, my, my um, point and is, I probably I, would hide it so people couldn't add shitloads of stuff to it. Because <laughs> I, I ran into some trouble where I created an instance for a research project I was working with this other uh, professor and Matt on. And the professor went in and added every single CNCF repo. Oh. And so I, I've I've definitely uh, learned my lesson on just popping up instances that people can add anything to. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my point is it doesn't even, it doesn't actually even need to be an Augur instance. Like. No, you just need the data. I just need the, the database. Um, and we could yeah. maybe do maybe have a reproducible way to um, to get the database dump with with these orgs, 
I mean, or maybe it makes sense for you to do an auger instance. I don't know. I'm just saying that I don't I don't necessarily care about the front end. I really only care about the Postgres database on the back end. Yeah. I mean, the requirement is basically you need enough data to play with that you can build models. Yeah. And if it uh, if you get to the end of that cycle and you know what all the data that you need is, then it's um, then we can just extract it from the massive instance. Mm -hmm. um, we'll know the fields and how to extract it. So I think, I think yeah. I'm thinking of it like as a, a learning instance of some, it has to be large enough um, to, it sounds like for a modeling purpose, it would need to be large enough to give you enough data that you could model. Um, let's take my, you know, this, these actually might not be right because um testing them, like evaluating the models is probably going to require like a larger corporate, like the public instance one, as I talk through this, because the, my, my expectation is that, tell me if I'm guessing right here, but what they want to do is look at these mid, uh, repositories that had licensing changes and see if they can build a model to identify the antecedent things that were happening in that repo that may have signaled a forthcoming licensing change. Uh -huh. So the purpose of the modeling would be to try to anticipate future licensing changes in a larger universe of repositories, right? Yes. Okay. So the, all right. So the evaluation part of that would need the public instance scale of data um, in order to evaluate it. So the playing with it part could happen from the smaller instance, but I only know this from doing this a lot myself. Mm -hmm. You need a larger corpora to evaluate. And yeah. this may actually be a pretty small corpora for, strangely enough, it might not seem small, but because they're all such big repositories, but these might. No, I mean, if you look at this from a statistics problem, right, This these um, license changes are a rare event, right? Um, right. If you look at right. the jillions of open source projects and the number of which have license changes, this is a very yeah. small number of repositories that have yeah. this is 19 repositories yeah. Yeah. um so it is it is very much kind of a, a rare event from a statistical standpoint um yeah but I yeah they're basically they, all, they, all anomalies you, you make a good point. You make, yeah you make yeah it is kind of an anomaly i don't know that we'll i don't know that we'll even be able to come up with something that um yeah because the idea is that you could you could predict maybe the likelihood or predict the risk of a particular repository having a license change in the future uh, based on some some data. But you make a good point. I mean, it's not it's not just about this data set. We need to have a comparison data set, which is a much larger. Yeah, dataset. and forgive me, I've just been like talking this through in my know. head, making sure I understand the problem. Yeah. And as I talked no, it through totally that far, I was like. Actually, this isn't going to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's a really, it's a really good point. But I think, I think this is a good place to start, and this gives us, yeah, um, we can start exploring the data and looking at what what variables we might want to look at. Eventually, we we'll, we will need, um, yeah, we'll need to do this more at at scale to have the comparisons. But I think if we had a database that had these, in just it, to... it would be super helpful. Okay. I should, I mean, so the other part of it is before we meet again, data science meets next week, right? Uh, this week. Oh, this week, what day? I forget, sorry. Uh, Wednesday. It's on, it's on the agenda for, yeah, I put this on the agenda for the data science meeting on Wednesday. Okay. That's a little but with me, I that... mean, I don't know that we're gonna start on this project right away. Like it's, it's gonna depend on what projects people are interested in working on. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not it's not super urgent, I guess is, is my point. Okay. Yeah, because whenever I hear not so super even urgent. if we don't have the data set, we can start thinking because I think first we we do need to think about like what what fields we're gonna need, what data are we gonna look at, how how might we structure this? And I think that there are probably some other data sources that we might want to pull in um aside from from what we get in Augur. I don't want to have this conversation on a recorded call, but I'll mention for you to tuck away, Don, that 
you and I need to sort out how we're going to address any potentially identifiable information contained in an unfiltered Augur database. Yeah. Um, I have many solutions in mind, but yeah, you, I think that's something for you and I to work out together on the side for the community. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Because we do. That doesn't. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's have that conversation. It's not an, it's not an obstacle to the technical work, but I do think you and I should sort it and be clear with each other so we can be clear with others and socialize it. Yeah. Because it may not be me running these queries. It may be other people from the data science community, um, in right. which case that the, it does become a problem. It won't be a problem as long as we do it smart and we're smart people and we'll do it smart, but <laughs> we'll figure out we a just, way to make this work. Yeah. yeah. We just need to, yeah, we just, it's just like in my head. Okay. This is, we got to address this now. Yeah. Yeah, Sean, I was curious to know, I'm not sure whether you're done with this topic. I feel um, like we've socialized it well. Oh, what I was yeah. going to say okay. is, um, Don, before the next Augur meeting, I think I'll have a clearer picture and possibly even, uh, we, yeah, I, I mean, I'll, sort, I'll have the, the technical part isn't hard. Oh, this is what I was thinking. Um, we should know about the physical infrastructure scope and scale potential before the next meeting of Augur, at least, I think. I don't know if we'll know it by Wednesday. Okay. Like if I can get compute to support a read-only instance or not. Okay. So. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, um, is there a way in Augur that you're tracking repository branches? No, actually. We um we only gather the default branch and do commit mm -hmm. analysis on that data. Mm -hmm. However, I, mean, I say that, so I'm thinking of commits. The only commits we count are for the whatever the default branch is, usually main, sometimes dev, sometimes strange other things. Yeah, be, but yeah, for yeah. pull requests, for pull requests, mm -hmm. we get all of them. So that would be any pull request between any branches or forks. And so we'll have a wider scope in the pull request commit data than mm -hmm. we do in the repository commit data. And, and, but we, and, we're not trying to count every branch because, I mean, I think I, trying to put every branch in a database is insane. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and most of them are junk, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, yeah. And it was, um, um, I actually didn't mean that whether you're tracking every branch, but probably a table or place where... Uh, um, you, there is a list of branches associated with the main repo or that particular um, instance? We've we've never done it because, okay. and in, in my head, I haven't ever bothered. Don, tell me if I'm on track or just misguided here. I feel like a, like 80% of the branches on any given repository are kind of ephemeral. Like they mm -hmm. come and they go. And, you know, once the PR is merged, they're deleted. So like trying to track that as some kind of static data set just wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily, I don't think it would get us much analytically. I don't think it would tell us um, much. Um, let me, uh, let me ask, can I ask a different question, Enoch? Um, hmm. What are you, what are you trying to get? Like what, what, what are you trying I to was, accomplish? I was curious when I read on the GitHub, um, I'm not sure where the link is, but I was reading what GitHub considers contributions and um some of those apart from the commits and the PRs and the PR reviews were creating a branch and also um, a discussion on a repo plus are uh, closing a discussion. So, and I was curious to know, oh, I didn't know these were actually part of contributions that GitHub considers. So I went through the, I get the other data to check whether there is any place where one of those is being tracked because it probably contributes to a, contribu a contribution count in a repository. So that was my angle of asking the question. So we do count all of the communication acts as contributions. Unless GitHub has changed, yeah, they um, only count they only count um, commits, I think. Let me let me, let me see if I have like that. under under community. Oh, no, that's not it. 
contributors it's under contributors yeah so commits okay yeah contributors i see yeah contributions from commits additions deletions but yeah contributors this is still just commit data there's no information so what one thing auger does and i think grimoire lab does as well is they we count things like issues issue comments pull requests pull request comments as contributions and when you're modeling the data like don described from the data science group probably they're weighting different types of contributions differently so commits of course way more maybe pull request reviews way more even that than even those but like issue comments or pull request comments way less Right. Like, um probably well, I think maybe um that was the link i was looking at i just sent it to the chart for what github counts as a contribution ah, on your profile what, what counts as a green a green dot interesting so we only try so it's, it's a pull request issues and um, commits probably this is a different collection than oh. any other list of things i've seen before for counting contributions <laughs> okay. so what you're seeing on the repository is different apparently than what gets you a green box Am I looking in a wrong place for the description? No, of a I don't think so. It's, uh... No, I mean, I think, I think, Sean, you're looking at things from a repository perspective. Um, yes. And I think that this is looking at things from a people perspective. So, mm -hmm. so less about what, what really, like, I don't know, less about what you might think about from a repository standpoint and more about the actions that people take, which are a part of, making contributions now all these happen in repositories don't get me wrong but yeah but you know think about it, think about it this way right if i'm if i'm a maintainer and we're getting ready to build this new feature and so i create a branch where we're going to collaborate together on mm -hmm. big feature x um that's i'm making a, a contribution to the project right i'm creating this this branch and then you know getting people to, to work within it um or you can think about it from a forked perspective forked repository perspective. So I fork the data science working group repository. I create mm -hmm. a branch because I'm going to create a whole bunch of new projects um, or something, or I'm going to create a licensed data set. So I create a, I create a branch and then, you know, I'm eventually going to, you know, submit a pull request or something and, and merge that. But the, mm -hmm. I, I can see why creating the branch itself would be considered a contribution. I do too. I, yeah. Mathematically, I, I think I'm just seeing an unbalanced equation where when I look at the data for a repository, it doesn't include things that are counted for the person. And mm -hmm. I, 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 did, I just have a problem with the equations counting different things and being called similar things because it confuses me at some math level that's <laughs> overthinking. I'm overthinking it. You're right. Yeah. Because it, think... it does make sense as what is the problem? This solves that problem. Right. And I think that this is becoming more, this is becoming more common, um, referring to things as a contribution and yeah. not meaning to commit when we say that. Um, because... and, 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 and when, and, and just to, just to add, when I was trying to pull some data from Aga, I was, I was cross-checking with the repositories on the, on the GitHub, on their GitHub. And you'd see there is just a slight difference with what GitHub is counting as contributors with what Aga is also con considering contributors. Yeah. I assume Aga is counting higher. And one of the things that we've done within within DevStats within the CNCF is we we count really lots of these things as a contribution. So when you're looking at the 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 number of contributions that a person has made to Kubernetes or name your favorite CNCF project. It includes um, includes commits, includes pull requests, includes get, uh, like comments on issues. It includes all of a whole bunch of different things. And so I think that we're starting to talk about that, all of these things together as as contributions and not just not just kind of commits and pull requests. Okay, well, I, I just wanted to to find out whether I'm not finding that, but it's actually there. That last statement, I'm not sure I'm following. Did no, you get I mean, that solved? I just wanted to find, <laughs> I just wanted to know whether um, I'm looking for it, but I'm just not getting it, yet it's somewhere in agar. 
but now I know that we're not tracking the branch or the. Yeah, we don't create. We don't track branch creation. Um, yeah, maybe there's probably you know. I okay, I say that. Um, it you know what? It's probably in the event stream, which we do get the event stream. However, uh, it's going to depend on the activity level at a repository whether we have a complete event stream or not, because our GitHub access is um, not not uh, infinite. So, all right. Fair enough. All right. That yeah. was my. That Feel was free my... to follow up in Slack too, Enoch, if yeah. you have other questions. Sure. Okay. I'm um, probably, Sean, is there an update about a note from you? I was curious when I came on this call just to know how far since it had been long that I'd been on this call and this is where all updates were happening. So we've, um, I can't remember how long you've been on the call either, but most often, like in most most instances of this call, the last two, three months, we've had an update from Lamy okay. and her design team. And I, I think, I, I can't remember Emmanuel, if you're part of that effort or a different one um, on the eight knot design. I was and, uh, not that intense. Yeah, yeah um, so I was going to sort of give an update. Um, actually. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I think the major update we have right now is that we started building. So right now we've we are kind of done with the registration and login for Ogo. And um we already we have the um the charts already created and the new design system and everything. So we're just starting to design. The new features with the new design um system that we created so that's what we're primarily doing we done with the registration and login screen that's using the new design system now so that's what we've done and um uh i think the next on the roadmap if i check um just trying try to pull up the roadmap here uh one sec So we're starting to work yeah. on the um, users dashboard. That's what we're working on right um, next now under um, repository list. That's what we'll be working on this week and next week. So before the next call, which since this call is now to, um, in um, two weeks, we're going to have like updates on the users dashboard and the repository list by then. Great. I'm looking forward to that. That's awesome. Thank you, Emmanuel. Yeah. I think Lamy also said she couldn't join because she had to run an errand. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, right. perfect. Thank you, Emmanuel. That's a great up. I'm looking forward to the call in two weeks. Then, Don, I'll figure. I'll I'll uh, communicate with you on Slack about how to get this um, data that you were we were discussing at the beginning, yeah. and um, I'll see if. I, I, I think when Wednesday is uh, one of the days where I'm in the field here, so I probably won't be on the data science call, but I'm also yeah. on a bizarre, bizarrely different time zone. So I haven't quite internalized exactly when I'm where in the context no. of our normal call schedule. So uh, this is just <laughs> my, it's really like my first uh, three or four hours of work here that you're, you're catching. So yeah. uh, I just arrived. Okay, yeah, we'll settle in and then, uh, yeah, we can chat more about this. We can figure out what makes sense. Okay, that sounds good. Anything else anyone wants to bring up or shall we declare it into the call? All right, well, thanks, everybody. I will talk with you all in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.